Hey guys, I'm Dave Troll, and welcome to the Troll Gallery. While working on a project recently, I fell into some old habits, and not the good kind. You see, for the better part of 30 years, I've worked with older table saws that didn't have a lot of safety equipment. Riving knives and blade guards just weren't there. And while I do try to use my riving knife as often as I can, sadly, I'm still not a fan of blade guards. You should be, but I'm not. I'm old and set in my ways. Let me show you a few things that have happened over the last few days. And if you're wondering, there were no injuries, just a few subtle reminders to work more carefully and pay attention to what I'm doing. I had recently been using my dado set, and to do that I have to lower the riving knife out of the way. The riving knife sits just behind the saw blade and prevents the stock from closing on the back of the blade. This doesn't always happen, but when it does, it's caused by internal stress in your stock that pitches together once the curve gets past the blade. When I started working on this project and put my rip blade on the saw, I forgot to raise my riving knife. For 30 years, I used saws without them, so I either didn't notice or just fell into my old ways. You can also see that I was ripping some narrow stock and I didn't use a push stick. I know how close I can comfortably come to the blade, but for most people, and me included, an inch and a half is probably too close. On the next cut, I decided that a push stick would be a good idea, but I still hadn't noticed the missing riving knife. I continued to mill the stock for my project and still had my rip blade on with no riving knife. These pieces were ripped at 3 inches, and for me, that's far enough away not to use a push stick. Notice that I take my left hand and hold the table. That reminds me not to let my hand get too close to the blade with the small cutoff. Have I mentioned that I'm set in my ways? And I never get used to using a blade guard. If I used one here, this wouldn't have happened. The board slipped out of my hands, dropped on the blade, and was thrown back towards me. To be fair, that was the slowest I've ever seen a board leaving a blade like that. Notice that my reactions were to jump back while pulling my hands up and away from the blade. I've had a few close calls before, and I know the best thing to do is just run away. I wasn't shaken up, and I had to do a little, look mom, I've still got all my digits. You can see here that the blade barely touched the stock, only catching a corner, but that was enough to ruin that piece and toss it back towards me. It could have been much worse. When I switched over to my plywood blade, I raised the riving knife and began to cut my cheek goods. While I don't have a shot of it, my first cut on the plywood was a struggle. I got about halfway through and everything just kind of bound up. I stomped the saw, did some checking, and realized that my plywood blade is a thin curved blade, and it was thinner than the riving knife. Since the curve was smaller than the knife, it bound up and wouldn't let me finish my cut. Looks like it's time to pick up a full curved plywood blade. Rather than continue to work without the riving knife, I put my rip blade back on and finished the cut safely. An outfeed table or stand would have helped a little dip at the end of my cut, Luckily, I was cutting quarter-inch plywood, and that's fairly late. So to give you guys an idea of what my saw should look like when I'm using it, these are all the attachments. The riving knife is in place. I've added my blade guard. And this is one of the better blade guards that I've used because it's split. So one side can come up or the other, which is nice because if you're using smaller stock, and you're going along the fence, this side will raise and this side stays down, keeping your fingers away from the blade. That's a good thing. The other thing I put back on is my anti-kickback poles. And these guys are spring-loaded, and they've got these little teeth on them. And what they do is kind of what it says in the name. It's an anti-kickback thing. Once the stock gets past the blade, gets past the riving knife, the kickback poles grab it. And if you try to pull back, 
the teeth dig in. So if you did get in a situation where there was a kickback, it would be really hard for it to come back to you because the paws are grabbing it. So with all that said, am I gonna use this stuff all the time? Mm, probably not. Should you? Probably. And don't get me wrong, there are times when you can't use some of these things. If you're not doing a through cut, um, some, of the, some of these get in the way. Uh, if you're using a dado, sometimes they get in the way. So there are times when it's okay to take them off. Being a stubborn old man is probably not the best reason, but it's my reason and kind of works for me. But like I said, just because I do it, doesn't mean you should. You know what your parents used to say, you know, do what I say, not as I do? Use your safety equipment. I've got all 10. Uh, I'm doing my best to keep them. It's been over 30 years that I've been doing this. But I've met enough people over the years who aren't as lucky as I am. And my first question to them is, what did you do wrong? And it was usually I took off the safety equipment, wasn't paying attention, things like that. So you have the safety equipment. Put it on, use it when you can, stay sharp, pay attention to what you're doing, and above all, never get close to the blade. That's today's tip. After all these years, I still need a reminder from time to time to pay attention to what I'm doing. Old habits, blades, and jigs don't necessarily work well with my new table saw. I've already replaced my rip blade for one that will give me nice clean cuts. And my next investment will be a plywood or a crosscut blade that will work with my riving knife. I may even invest in a real track saw that will let me break down plywood without putting the strain on my small table saw. While I don't have room for outfeed tables and side supports yet, they'll be a big help when I expand my shop. Until then, I'll just have to pay closer attention to what I'm doing, watch my setups, make sure that I've got all my safety equipment set up. Oh, and don't mention any of this my better half. She hates to hear these things. Love to hear what you think about this video. Are there other things I could do more safely with the small table saw? Could it work more efficiently or safer? Put them in the comments below. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Maybe even ring that bell so you get notified every time I put out a new video. Lots of stuff coming down the pike. Probably don't want to miss that. So for now, have a great day. Take care. Stay safe. We'll see you soon.